It was like stepping into a new world and and having to learn and make your way every single day. But I was blessed with a lot of great players and a lot of uh, opportunity to uh, to find my way. And we were in the NBA Finals, two games away from winning it. I think we did pretty well. Pretty well, not bad. Uh, David Blatt speaking on his uh, tenure, his brief tenure as the head coach of the Cavaliers. Uh, first year there, took them to the finals. A lot of credit was given to LeBron for being the coach. A lot of blame for David Blatt. Here's a question, Stephen A. Let's talk about his future. Uh, will he be back next year, quite simply? I honestly don't know. I'm not going to pretend that I know the answer to that question because I think that lies within the relationship that exists between LeBron James along with David Griffin, the GM, and the owner, Dan Gilbert. I would tell you that <clears throat> I have a hard time having the mentality that David Blatt should be gone. Uh, he did win 53 games during the regular season. He did get through the Eastern Conference. He did advance this team to the NBA Finals. Now, we can debate till the cows come home who's exactly responsible for that as a coach, but he was the head coach on record when this happened. And I think it's disrespectful for people that are not inside to look strictly at his record and his accomplishments or lack thereof and say, he needs to go, period. Now, having said all of that, if people are basing their feelings about that on the relationship with LeBron, uh, how much LeBron, how receptive LeBron is to his coaching, uh, etc. then that's a different animal altogether. Because if there's one player in this league that has the right to sit there and say, there's a coach I don't want to play for, it's LeBron James. He's earned it. And he knows the game of basketball. And if he has a, if he has an issue with you, um, then it's an issue. I will tell you that what has been said to me about David Blatt, who I find to be a very nice man, I know that people, there are some people do who think that he's arrogant or whatever the case may be. Well, look, if you've been in the EuroLeague, you were the EuroLeague coach of the year last year, you took the Russian national team to a bronze medal in the Olympics, you've had incredible success over in Europe, and people are acting like you know nothing about basketball because you never coached in this league, I'm sure most of us will come across as arrogant because at some point in time, we're going to stand up and defend defend ourselves if somebody's trying to shred whatever credibility that we have you didn't coach in the nba i mean it's not like he had a job and flopped he didn't coach in the nba before so for people to say that he can't coach when he's been coaching overseas he's like wait a minute i've done i've done something so i certainly understand how he can come to his own defense and come across as arrogant in that regard it's just that at the end of the day, I find him to be a nice man who was a rookie, who made rookie mistakes, that deserves the opportunity to come back and prove himself. But that's just me on the outside looking in. If I'm LeBron, I'm not concerned about any of that. I'm concerned about the fact that next year I'll be entering my 13th season. And does this particular coach give me the best chance to win? And if the answer is no to that question, then LeBron James has every right to sit there and say, we need to move in a different direction because I don't have but so much time. Mm. That's the best way I can answer that question. So <clears throat> gut feeling, just gut feeling, just flat out guess. What's your best guess? If I had to guess, I would guess that he'll be gone. And the reason I would guess that he'll be gone is because I'm trying to find, I'm trying to decipher who's going to stand up and stick out their chest and say, under no circumstances do I want Black to leave. Right. Who's going to do that? <laughs> I don't know of anybody who's going to do that other than David Griffin. And to this city, no disrespect, because I like David, David Griffin. I think he's done a good job as a general manager. But he don't matter to these people ahead of LeBron James. Mm. So it's really all about... LeBron James and what LeBron James wants. And what LeBron James is going to have to accept is that whatever happens to David Blatt, it's going to be perceived as being okayed by LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Whether he stays or goes, there's no way that people are going to believe that it happened against LeBron James' will. Yep. LeBron James. My gut feeling, David Blatt will not be back next year. Just observing it mostly from TV, I found body language of this team... Tune, tune this man out for the most part. Mm -hmm. ha, uh, uh, huddles between quarters. Yes. Um, 
we he saw some halftime night. video yeah. of Jr. But Jr. tunes out everybody. Oh, yeah, but yeah, but, yeah, but he's looked, a Jr. With all due respect, yeah. Jr.'s got a lot. No, he needs to be better about that. Those cameras were rolling, and he looked completely detached okay. and disinterested. And his game is not good enough for him to be acting like I'm, that. I'm with you on that, and maybe that's the way he would treat Phil Jackson or something. You know, he just his mind just goes off somewhere else. But to me, David Blatt. In, in all of his media interviews, in his between quarters interviews, he, he always came off as a little defensive, mm -hmm. just just unimpressive, like he wasn't really in control. He's, he's always fighting the current, you know, like like he feels like he, he has to fight back, like he has to defend himself when, in fact, you're coaching a team that's pretty good here. And he didn't seem in command of it. He didn't seem confident in his role. Like even last night, he's saying, well, I had to try to figure it out on the fly. I think he went along for the greatest ride any first-year coach could ever go on, <laughs> okay. thanks to the king. I will say this. I have not asked LeBron James this question myself because he's too damn insulated for me to, to ask him a, a valid question. I mean, good Lord have mercy. It's like the Berlin Wall for crying out loud. Wait, are but you I complaining was, about well, this? Well, in that regard, yeah, because oh. I, I, I mean, they, you know, there are some questions that I think LeBron needs to answer mm. when it comes to the future of the Cavaliers that I have yet to have heard asked. Mm. That's just me. Interesting. With that being said, I will say this. I spoke to one particular member of the Cavaliers organization that said something to me less than two weeks ago. And I asked a question because I had heard John Barry talking about he was cool, calling the game on radio for ESPN. Mm -hmm. And he's right there courtside and he's noticing that LeBron wouldn't even look at Black. And so I asked somebody, what's up with that? And their exact words to me. LeBron is class personified, man. LeBron ain't trying to hurt nobody. LeBron knows a man's got a family and he's got a career and all of that other stuff. It's just very, very difficult to support somebody who doesn't have a clue. That's, That's what they said. Now, they, they said that. Mm -hmm. LeBron did not say that. They said that. <clears throat> but nevertheless... That's the feeling you get mm -hmm. from time to time watching Black when he communicates with these players. And fair or not, that's the perception. And I feel bad for him if it's false because it's a perception that's out there about him. All right, look, would you rather lose in the finals or make the playoffs, guys? That's the question. Would you rather lose in the finals or make the playoffs? Uh, hmm. Or not make the playoffs? LeBron answered that question after the break. We'll talk about it in just a few moments. First Take is presented by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. And in part by True Biotics, a daily probiotic from the nutrition experts at One A Day. All right, according to uh, the Westgate Superbook, Las Vegas Superbook, Cleveland favorites. So here's the question. Will we be back here next year, Skip Bayless? I'm going to do this for this young man sitting right here because I promised him before the show I would do it. The Cleveland Indians will win the World Series this year. Uh, wow. And we, we will be back here next year. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, Stephen A., will we be back here next year? I believe so. I believe so because I believe with Anderson Barajal coming back healthy, I think you will retain Moss Cobb and Tristan Thompson, and I think Kyrie Irving will be back healthy and look out. But I will say this. It will be very interesting if D. Wade stays in Miami. Because if he stays in Miami, okay. you've got D. Wade with Goran Dragic, with mm -hmm. Hassan Whiteside, a healthy Chris Bosh and Luau Dang, and Pat Riley will do something else to tweak that roster. Mm -hmm. It yep. can get very interesting next season. I have two things to say. For the folks in the Bay, thank you so much. Yes. We appreciate you at Lake Chalet or along Lake Merritt. For the folks here at the Music Box Super Club, thank you, thank you so much for having us. We appreciate you. First take, enjoyed our time on the finals. It was the NBA Finals 2015. It's a wrap. It's in the books. We're back in Britain. It's all said and done. Golden State Warriors are the 2015 NBA champions. However, the fans in Cleveland still came out. We appreciate them. We don't have too many friends, but we still have some friends here. Good for them.
Good sports. We like to say again, congratulations to Golden State and obviously congratulations to the Cleveland Cavaliers for making it this far. Today, obviously on the show, we will discuss all things finals related, how the series went. We'll get their takes. Obviously, we'll hear from you two at home. My name is Carrie Champion. That's Skip Bayless and that's Stephen A. Smith. Uh, this is First Take. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, gentlemen, would you like to yes, say anything? I, I, I want to give an ovation to everybody who came today. Thank you very much. I, I know it's tough, and I, I spoke to a lot of you before the show, and you said you're here just because you love the show, Aww. and we appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys over there. Thank you guys over there. It's really very kind of you all for being here.